वेलकम टू द यूनिट मर्चेंडाइजिंग प्रोसेस इन दिस यूनिट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड मर्चेंडाइजिंग प्रोसेस दिस यूनिट कंप्रेज ऑफ टू मॉड्यूल्स एंड ए फाइनल रिव्यू सेक्शन दट इनवाइट्स यू टू रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन वॉट यू हैव लर्न बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस यूनिट स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द मर्चेंडाइजिंग प्रोसेस outline the planning function of merchandising outline the buying function of merchandising outline the selling function of merchandising outline various merchandising functions at export house buying house and retail house this module outlines the basic steps in merchandising merchandising is concerned with all the activities necessary to provide a store's customers with the merchandise they want to buy when and where they want it and at prices they can afford and are willing to pay the american marketing association defines merchandising as the planning involved in the marketing right merchandise at right place at right time in the right quantities at the right price it involves making buying plans understanding the customers selecting the merchandise and promoting and selling the goods to the consumer the merchandiser ensures that the business de-risks itself by making the best decision at a point of time de-risking refers to the process of optimizing sales performance and minimizing stock risk by making informed decisions merchandise planning focuses on the following issues determining future customer demand in terms of styles quantity colors prices and fashion emphasis planning to meet future customer demand and assure a profit selecting resources and buying merchandise coordinating advertising and sales promotion to assist in bringing the customer into the store by the merchandise projecting the image of the store establishing sound merchandising policies to ensure the success and growth of the business and to assist in meeting competition the main areas of the planning activity of merchandising management rotates around planning stock to be delivered into the business and moving delivered stock around the business planning stock to be delivered to the business this involves the following activities analyzing historical sales patterns and trends recommending forward fabric buying levels recommending forward garment buying levels monitoring and managing delivery of new new stock to the distribution center ensuring that overall stock levels and buying are in line with the organizational sales plans moving delivered stock around the business this involves the following activities initial allocation of new stock to shops deciding what quantity for each shop store replenishment as garments start to sell how much more stock and how quickly it should be sent to individual branches recommending the level of repeat buys of best selling lines transfers and recalls of faulty or non seasonal stock fashion merchandising consists of three main steps planning buying and selling let us first look at planning fashion is subject to change and thus planning must have flexibility planning is based on how much we expect to sell and how much inventory it will take to secure that selling plan the assortments so customer orientation secondly knowing what people want when they want and how much they would pay for it 
is critical to selling. It is important to prepare six month buying plans. This requires the knowledge of fashion trends, market conditions and economic factors. The most important factor in planning is flexibility. Then buying. The merchandiser like the buyer is often trying to work on many seasons at the same time. They will be helping the buyer plan ahead for distinct seasons color ratios. They will also be helping the buyer to decide on how many garments to buy within each category for the coming season. In addition, they will be controlling the current season's stock flow into the business and advising on whether or not repeat buying will be necessary. The merchandiser also keeps uh, helps decide whether late deliveries need to be cancelled or whether or not poor selling lines may have to be their prices reduced to ensure that they will sell out. The merchandiser has to estimate sales and plan stock levels to achieve the planned sales and margin for a specific garment type. Provide regular analysis and progress reports referring to stock levels, sales performance, stock purchases to senior management. Work with the buyer on range planning to maximize commercial opportunities for products. Manage intake and commitment to accommodate the stock requirements of the business at any given time and open to buy requirements of the garment type. Manage stock distributions to stores, optimizing customer demand, available selling space and seasonal selling opportunities. Effectively manage and develop merchandising distribution team. Buying is done by these classifications. Price lines, sizes, quantities. Buying is dependent on customer demand and estimated by the study of customer wants and needs. A successful buyer knows what a customer wants, when they want it and how much they want to pay for the goods. Buying involves these functions. One, choosing the resource. Second, selecting the merchandise. And the third, securing the best terms. And finally, the fourth, actual placing of the order. The buyer is responsible for not only what to buy and when to buy, but also where to buy and how much to spend. Buying responsibilities include establishing and maintaining effective buying relationship with vendors, adequately stocking the department price lines and securing the best possible markup on all the purchases. Supervising the physical inventory or stock counts to verify the accuracy of the stock records. Then selling. While buying is dependent on customer demand, demand is determined best by the actual customer response to the goods made available by the buying function. So the buying function cannot exist without the involvement in selling function. This function includes communication and promotional activity. So thus the thumb rule goods well bought or half sold. The trend towards central buying merchandise presentation to the customer is becoming a function of the sales manager rather than buying. A store regardless of its size cannot and should not stock all the merchandise available in the market. The crux of merchandising is selecting the merchandise with certain characteristics that are indicative of tastes of 
customers of a store in such assortments, depths and price levels that make for a proper rate of sale decided upon by the buyer, that is the customer. Depending on the size of the company, the merchandising departments can be divided based on their key focus areas. The design department focuses on procuring materials as desired by the design department. Scouting for a new materials and making data available to the designers on excess or slow moving items of raw materials and trims in stock. The production department focuses on procuring the material as per the production plan at the right time and in right price and for right quantities to ensure that production process is never hampered. The retail department focuses on ensuring that the merchandise available at the stores is what is selling or is likely to sell and withdraw slow moving items. The overall department overviews the flow of goods and services within the organization. This module examines the process of buying. These are the steps for buying merchandise. One, making buying contacts. Second, factors in selecting the resources. Third, market trip planning. Fourth, arrival in the market. And fifth one, visiting the resources. Finally, the sixth one would be completion of the trip. To make contacts, one has to visit markets, sales representatives, view catalogs, visit buying offices, store owned resources and wholesalers. The factors in selecting the resources include merchandising offerings, vendor policies, vendor services and vendor performance. When planning a market trip, time the market trip, prepare the buying plan, outline the steps in making a market trip and plan the trip. Before arriving at a market, have a detailed plan as to what needs to be done once one has arrived at the market. Use these guidelines when visiting the resources. Know the buying plan fully, write down definite merchandise needs, visit the better price line resources first to develop fashion and quality standards. Meet key executives at resources visited. Visit factories and workrooms to learn more about manufacturers capacity to produce and maintain quality control. Make a commitment only after the market has been covered fully in a classification. Do not overbuy. Check the buying plans, notes and merchandise on order before writing orders. Negotiate with the vendor for best terms, discounts and shipping arrangements. Make notes about merchandise to share with the store personnel. Complete the trip by selecting the merchandise at the market, completing the editing process, negotiating the purchase. Discounts may be in the form of cash discounts, trade discounts, seasonal discounts and quantity discounts. Cash discounts, percentage reductions allowed per for paying invoices on or before a date specified by the vendor. Then trade discounts, percentage reductions from a list price offered to middlemen. Seasonal discounts, percentage discounts in price offered to encourage retailers to place orders for merchandise ahead of the usual buying season. Quantity discounts, price reduction offered by the vendor to the retailer for buying goods in large amounts. Dating is the number of days the retailer is entitled 
to take a cash discount and to pay the invoice before it is considered past due. Important methods of dating are regular dating, EOM dating, extra dating and ROG dating. First, regular dating calculated from the date of invoice. 8 by 10 net 30 means 8% discount is extended if the bill is paid within 10 days. EOM dating is calculated from the end of the month. An invoice dated July 18th with terms of 8 by 10 EOM means if 8% discount can be extended if paid by August 10. Extra dating 3 by 10 dash 30 extra means the retailers get 30 extra days above 10 days to make the payment for 3% discount. Then ROG dating receipt of goods allows the retailer to calculate the discount period from the date the merchandise is received at the store. Let us now move on to the terms of delivery. Different terms are used to refer when the title to the merchandise passes from vendor to buyer and where the risk of ownership begins. Important delivery terms are as follows. Free on board at the factory. Free on board at the factory. Full freight allowed free on board to your city. Free on board at job site or contractor shop and free alongside ship at the nearest fort. Let us review each of these now. FOB factory free on board at the factory. The title passes to the buyer when the goods are delivered by the seller to the freight carrier. The buyer pays the freight and is responsible for freight damage claims. FOB factory FFA free on board at factory full freight allowed. The title passes to the buyer when the goods are delivered by the seller to the freight carrier. The seller pays for the freight charges but buyer is responsible for freight damage claims. FOB city of destination so free on board to your city. The title passes to the buyer when the goods are delivered by the seller to the freight terminal in the city or nearest city of destination. The seller pays the freight and is responsible for freight damage claims to the terminal. The buyer pays the freight charge and is responsible for the freight damage claims from terminal to the final destination. FOB job site free on board at job site or contractors shop. The title passes to the buyer when the goods are delivered to the job site. The seller pays the freight and is responsible for freight damage claims. FAS port of a specific port, free alongside ship at the nearest port. The title passes to the buyer when the goods are delivered to the ship dock or port terminal. The seller pays the freight and is responsible for freight damage claims to the ship dock or port terminal only. The buyer pays the freight and is responsible for freight damage claims from the ship dock or port terminal to the designated delivery point. Negotiating services includes packaging of merchandise for resale to the store customers, pre-ticketing and labeling of the merchandise and point of purchase selling aids, cooperating advertising money, training of the store sales people, money reimbursement for markdown taken on merchandise that does not sell, assumption of inventory responsibilities, for merchandise in the store, consignment selling which allows return of merchandise that does not sell. The key areas of bargaining are on payment terms and the credit period. 
when the bargaining on payment terms products can be bought by consignment or by memorandum consignment buying a case in retail shop purchase particular goods where payments are with hold until those goods are sold when they are sold the retail stores pay to the manufacturers and or to the wholesalers retail stores buys considering the possibility of goods return so that this method is not favored but this is well practiced memorandum buying the retailer buy the merchandise paying advance there is no return of unsold stock but discount at eoss end of the season sale is has been shared by the retailer and the vendor to dispose of the unsold stock when bargaining on credit terms remember the more the credit period the better it is when writing the purchase order this information should be included in the order form store name and address point of delivery order form serial number store department number date order is placed name and address of the shipper payment terms fob point product specifications quantity ordered there are different types of orders regular orders reorders open orders advance orders special orders back orders and blanket orders regular orders orders for regular stock placed with vendors by the buyer reorders are the orders for additional merchandise from a buyer to a vendor to replenish depleted stocks often placed for hot selling items then open orders unrestricted orders placed with a resident buying office for urgent requirement advance orders orders placed well in advance of the specified shipping date they are used with the staple stock where the buyer can accurately predict the needs in a or in advance special orders orders placed for a merchandise not regularly carried in stock or temporarily out of stock back orders orders placed for shipment or parts of shipment that were not filled on time by the vendor blanket orders free season orders placed with a vendor to be delivered in several lateral shipments over a period of time an export house is a firm that provides a worldwide service whose main activity is to export a product line from one place to another a merchandiser in an export house is a manager who has overall responsibility for the selection sales and profitability of the product range within a particular category a garment type for example shirts jackets etc export merchandising is discussed in detail in a separate unit a buying house acts as intermediaries between the retail houses and the export house who are possibly unknown to each other a merchandiser in a buying house a buying merchandiser is a manager who has overall responsibility for selection sale and profitability of the product range within a particular category or garment type for example say shirts regarding the role and responsibility of a merchandiser in a buying house the overall responsibility is to select the merchandise that maximizes the sales and profitability of a product range through meeting the target customer exact product needs to develop and buy a, a range of merchandise that achieves the profit margin and is consistent with the retailer's buying strategy the buyer's task therefore is to maximize full price sales of stock 
bought and minimize the quantity of unsold stock at the end of the season. To source and develop products from an effective supplier base, the task here is with the right export house and to get the right balance between the cost and quantity on products they buy. And then to research and evaluate all relevant products and market trends. Task is to evaluate all the information surrounding the development of a range. The information is diverse but falls into two main categories related to the current and past sales and future fashion trends. Then to be responsible for the negotiation of product prices including the delivery and payment terms. When the buyer has decided on the final product designs after inputs from the merchandising design and garment technology, he will begin the process of meeting the suppliers and discussing the cost prices. Also to communicate effectively with the suppliers that is the export houses, product terms and senior management within the company. Then to work with the constraint of merchandise planning, task is to operate within the control parameters that include financial budgets and specific commercial considerations such as historical sales performance and key fashion trends like color. A retail house sells the product or services to a final customer who actually use the product or derive personal benefits from the service. The merchandiser of a retail house is responsible for stock planning, management and control. The retail merchandiser maximizes the profitability of the department working within the normally accepted conventions of the business. But the level of such intervention depends on the size of the respective firm. The merchandiser is responsible for the moving of stock both in and around the business. They may vary from the organization to organization. The role of merchandiser is a senior role, usually of the same status as that of a buyer. There are four key responsibilities of a merchandiser. One, to provide regular analysis and progress reports referring to stock levels, sales performance and stock purchases to senior management. Then to work with the buyer on range planning to maximize commercial opportunities for the products. Then to manage intake and commitment to accommodate the stock requirements of the business at any given time and the open to buy requirement of the garment type. To manage stock distribution to the store optimizing customer demand, available selling space and seasonal selling opportunities. The merchandiser also provides regular analysis and progress reports referring to stock levels, sales performance and stock purchases to the senior management evaluates sales performance in relation to the sales targets and planned stock levels, produces weekly reports indicating their product areas performance compared with the target set, react effectively to the information as it arrives. Fast sellers will need to be re repurchased quickly, poor sellers may need to be marked down to lower the price and increase the consumer demand to clear them before the end of the season. Analyzes the information received together with the proposed plan of action for senior management's review and approval. The merchandiser also has to maximize commercial opportunities for products. He or she has to work with the buyer on range planning to maximize commercial opportunities for products. The merchandiser has to balance the range commercially ensuring that there is a correct mix of styles, colors, sizes and price points in the range 
both nationally and regionally. He or she provides the fundamental foundation for the future of organization and its importance must not be underestimated. Experienced merchandisers are able to add great deal to the process through their highly developed intuition into what figures are relevant or not. The merchandiser has to manage intake and commitment to accommodate the stock requirements of the business at any given time and the open to buy requirement of the garment type. Intake refers to new stock delivered into the business for distribution to stores. Commitment refers to stock on order and open to buy as we know is the amount of money available to spend on new stock. The merchandiser will keep a keen eye on daily and weekly deliveries to ensure that the shops are adequately stocked with right goods at the right time. Take daily decisions to either try and bring forward or delay future deliveries to ensure that current stock provides a balanced offering to the customers. Henceforth, merchandisers aim is to control stock flow into and through the business. The merchandiser has to manage stock distribution to store, optimizing the customer demand, available selling space and seasonal selling opportunities. He or she has to make the best use of stock available by trying to meet as much of the demand in the branches as possible and by maximizing the profitability of the sales. It is an incredibly difficult balance to get it right and a problem which can be made worse by timing as the opportunity to sell product at full price lasts only a season. The merchandiser undertakes as much detailed sales and stock analysis at individual shop level as they can and has to understand each shop's micro market or local trading environment. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize in this unit, you have comprehended the various steps in the process of merchandising and reviewed the role of merchandiser. Thank you.